Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to create dark backgrounds um, without having to just go to your black pencil. And I am working from the 24 set of pencils Prismacolor. Prismacolor is one of my favorite pencils to work with, uh, colored pencils to work with because it is so soft, because they have such a soft core to them and they blend really nicely. So as you can see in this picture, um, I've used a few different colors in this to create black. I did not use black to create the background at all. And what I ended up here with, um, because I put on such heavy applications of um, a really dark blue, a uh, dark brown, um, I think the Tuscan red is in there as well. Anything but every dark pencil I can get my hands on except for the black. Um, I've got really uneven areas here. I see a lot of lines where I've colored. It's just kind of mottled and crazy all over. And the other thing that happens when you have a really thick application of wax like this is you end up with something called bloom. And I'm going to show you by just a little bit of paper towel rubbing off some of the wax that comes up to the top and creates kind of a... Um, I don't know, kind of hazy look on the top. You can probably see that where I've taken off the wax. Then when you hold it at an angle, you can see the shininess of the area that I took the wax off of, right? And I'm really not taking off much color. I'm just um, getting the wax off of there. When you spray your piece with fixative at the end of working on the piece, it should stop it from blooming quite so much like that. You won't have to worry about it once you frame it, then making sure that you do fix it. But, um, the bigger problem, the, re the really the bigger issue with this piece is that there's so much modeled um, unevenness in the background of this piece. There are a few better ways to create a darker background than just using your pencil to burnish um, several different colors together like this. If you were using just one color and you put on a really heavy application, you probably wouldn't end up with all these little lines and spaces in between because the one color you're not trying to blend with anything. So. Let's just go to a uh, blank paper here so I can show you, demonstrate to you a couple different ways to go about this. First way would be in the 24 set to pick out some dark, some really dark pencils that are going to mix together to make a black. And so what I'm going to pick out is my indigo blue, uh, my Tuscan red hiding from me. And, oh, I don't know, maybe my dark green. Put that one in there too, just to even it out. Just because the Tuscan red can be really dark. You could use the dark brown instead if you wanted to, but I'm going to go for these three pencils here. Um, and you can see I've got a manufactured tip. This one hasn't been, since it came out of the box, hasn't been sharpened yet. I'm going to sharpen that. Excuse the noise. Um, because those really short tips like that will not last long on a Prismacolor pencil. They're so soft. So, at this point, um, I'm going to start out by just coloring in. Now I'm working on a piece of white bristle board, and this bristle board, remember, is smooth, but it still has some tooth, and as I hold my pencil at the back, um, I'm getting a lighter, uh, application of this pencil. I could go in here and just put it down really heavy like that. You can see how it crumbled when I did that because of the tip. Um, the thing about it though, if I do this and then I go back and I go over that with my other colors, wow that green just deadened it down right away. It turned into black immediately, didn't it? I don't really even need the blue on there, but the blue is going to make it really a midnight black. It's not going to get blacker than that. That's very, very dark. If I had to do that in an entire art piece, especially a larger piece, through the entire background, by the end of it, my hand would be dying. And I would get those, I would still, eventually, you're going to end up with so much wax buildup that it starts to just clump up. Okay. And that can happen even when you're putting on applications that are lighter like this. But if I'm just a little bit careful, I'm going to turn it so that my um, coloring doesn't always go the same direction, just in case, to just kind of cut down on those lines. This is the dark green. Just putting on lighter applications. Right. And then 
How about that indigo blue? That's not bad. The, the Huskin red is a very, very strong color, so it took a little bit to tone down that red in there. The green did a fairly good job of it, but... Right? Now that's not really dark, and I could keep going over it again and again and again until I get it darker, but I run the risk then of getting to this really gummied up area. Um, you know, it's not necessarily wrong. It's just in a larger area, it's really difficult to get a really smooth area like this when you're mixing colors. So if I wanted it to be darker than this and I didn't want to spend days and weeks and months trying to put down light, light applications, there's a few different things you could do. Um, you could put down your color really dark like this and then go back over it with a um, solvent like uh, odorless mineral spirits. I don't like to use anything that is quite that chemical, so I kind of stay away from those things myself. Another thing you could do is you could get pan pastels um, and put down a layer of pan pastel first and then put your colored pencil on top of it. It may cut back a little bit on how quickly you can color in with with your colored pencil, but um, still works. Another way to go about it is to take dry pastels, and this might be a little bit less expensive than getting the pan pastels. They can be pricey. Maybe not always, but, and I'm going to um, just take a dry, that was just a dry pastel, and note that I use the side of it. I don't want to use the tip of it because I don't want to take a chance if it's too hard to put impressed lines in my background. I'm going to use a brush that's called a scrubber. These scrubbers are wonderful. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. You can hear it. It's scrubbing, scrubbing in um, the pigment into the texture of the paper and you'll notice now that there's not all that white paper to contend with in that area anymore, right? Now, with a scrubber, I also can get up close to, so if I have the edge of a flower or something like that, I can get up close to that without brushing over the flower, and I don't have to worry so much about how difficult it is to, uh, to get this up to whatever my subject matter is, because remember, we're probably working on a background if we're doing this. So, um, you'll want to wash that out with some alcohol afterward, so you can get that color out of there. And you could use, um, when you're working on a mini, you could use an eye makeup applicator. Kind of slow going depending, this one's a really soft one so it could take a long, long time. But if I'm working on a mini and it's really small, I could do something like that. But I really do like the scrubber better. Now once I've done that, then all I have to do is take those same colors. You know, my brown already has a lot of red in it, so I'm just going to omit. Um, let's do it this time. Let's just use two pencils. Let's use the um, dark brown, which has enough red in it, and the indigo blue. Well, the Tuscan red adds a lot of vibrance to it. This might be a little bit too much brown. You know, you can always add more than one color. You don't have to use the brown. You can add, a, you can use a different color or you can add a few different colors of your pastel. But once again, I'm going back down over it lightly. Now I'm going to use that indigo blue over it. I'm getting a pretty good black there. I have to be careful though, because if I start pressing too hard, I'm going to get that mottled look again. I'm gonna turn the page so I don't get so many lines going one direction. But this will just go in a lot faster than that did, right? Than what we did previously. And it's much darker already. Now, if I'm still not happy with it and I don't think it's dark enough, I can go back. I'm going to get a small No, I'm going to use this scrubber. That'll be fine. And I can go ahead and scrub it. And it will get darker. And maybe stay a little bit more even than it would have been. Otherwise, it takes a little bit of muscle to scrub this into the into the page, but you can see I'm getting a pretty good black there. If I'm not happy with that, I can continue to go back over it. I don't want to press too hard. It's my nature to get busy and start pressing. 
a little bit too hard, but that's a little more, a little more pressure than I used before. That's the dark brown. And then I can just keep going back with my scrubber and pressing it in. Hopefully not getting too much of the pigment in my scrubber, right? You could do the same thing without the pastel in the piece and smooth it out a little bit, right? But it's not going to get as dark as this one did. Not as, as quickly, right? And you can kind of gauge it as you go. You know, if I feel like, nah, this is getting to be a little bit too brown, maybe I do want a little more red in this background, you know? I don't want it to be, I want it dark. Um, I want it to appear kind of black, but it can lean toward a color. Boy, that red really took it red quickly, didn't it? If I feel like that's just too red, I can go back. If I want to deaden it down, I could use the green, and that would, because um, that's the complementary of the red that's in that. So that would take it down really quickly. But I don't really want to make it mud. I don't really want to make it um, dead, right? I want it to still have vibrance. So I'm going to go with the blue. I'm going to go with the indigo blue instead. And you can see I'm getting a pretty good black right there. Still not as dark as this over here. But, you know, as I go over it, it's just getting darker and darker and darker. And staying a little bit, you know, now I'm using more pressure and you can see where I start to get into trouble as I start pressing harder and harder. Um, because that's where those lines start showing up and clumpiness of the wax, right? And I could go back over it with pastel. Um, and I'll show you what happens though when you do that because the wax will pick up the pastel. So it's kind of a kind of a toss up whether you want to do that or not. I'm going to put the pastel right on my scrubber and go back in here. See, I'm not madly in love with that. I think it just browned it out. It just kind of deadened it down. I could always use a different color. You can experiment, you know, maybe not in your finished piece. You don't want to experiment, but on a, a scrap piece like this. Now see, this light is a lighter blue. So it kind of, in my opinion, kind of lightened it up. Not necessarily wrong, it kind of has an interesting glow to it. But it's not as black or as dark as um, when you have the pencil on top. Oops, and I started out with a little bit too much pressure there and put a line right in and right there too. So you just gotta watch out as you go. Maybe a little more brown this way. Anyway, that shows you how to get to a dark background, um, hopefully without getting it too gummy and using that pastel, how you can fill in some of the white space of your paper ahead of time before you put down your lighter applications and blends of colored pencil um, to get a much darker tone right off the bat. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video.